Horny hobbies? What is that? Officially day four into self-quarantine, we're all sheltered in place at home. We just got something in the mail that's gonna allow us to try something that I've always been wanting to do, but just was very kind of skeptical on the entire hype around it. But you know what? I told myself since we're gonna be home for a long time, let's go ahead and give it a shot, man, and let's see what the hell DSLR film scanning is all about. This is a light table. So essentially the idea is you would take your negative, throw the negative on top of the light table so it illuminates through there, and then take your DSLR or your, you know, whatever camera you're gonna be using with a macro lens, and then you take a photograph of the negative, which you later on turn into your actual scan. So I'm curious to try it out, man. This is kind of cool. This is one of the cheaper ones. Uh, I think this was like 20 bucks on Amazon. One of the claims that uh, people make about scanning with a DSLR is that it, it's a lot quicker than using one of these. So if the hype around DSLR film scanning is true and I can knock out a roll of 36 exposures in about 10 minutes or so, that might be just the absolute best thing ever. So we'll see, man. Let's, let, let's test this out. Let's give it a shot. Now in terms of items that you need to get started, one, you need that light table, two, you need a camera of some sort, so a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, whatever it may be, and the third thing you're going to need that's essential, folks, is a macro lens. So the other day, I thrifted this Canon 50mm 3.5 macro lens uh, for 20 bucks, man, so I talked the lady down from about 60 bucks to 20 bucks. Uh, and luckily, man, I was able to get a hold of this. So I have a little adapter that I can uh, adapt this lens to. And then we're going to try that out. I'm going to set up the tripod here and try to get everything kind of uniform and organized. But man, so, so, so lucky with this lens right here. Uh, let's see if we can actually pull off the DSLR kind of film scanning that everybody seems to want to do. All right, so we got it all set up now, and um, <laughs> before I show you guys exactly what I did here, uh, please keep in mind that this is my first attempt doing it. So I could be doing something completely wrong, or maybe there could be better ways of doing so, but this is really just documenting my first time kind of doing it. So anyways, let me show you guys the setup that I have here. I basically set up my tripod right on top of the... Uh, the light table here which is sitting on top of my scanner and then what I'm gonna do is actually I have my uh, scanners film trays and I'm gonna set the film trays here on top just like that and I'm hoping with the camera that I'm filming with now uh, and the macro lens I'll be able to look at each individual frame and scan from there so all right so we switched over to the GoPro and I'm gonna show you guys really quick how I have it set up so so I went ahead and turned on focus peaking so that you can get a better kind of idea of uh, what you're gonna be scanning. And then I also turned on manual focus assist. So I try to get it as close as possible to the negative. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty close. Uh, that is the minimum focusing distance of this, uh, this macro lens. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Let's see how it turns out. I'm gonna load it into my computer and I'll give you guys my initial thoughts. So we're gonna scan some color, some black and white as well uh, as some medium format. And let's see how DSLR film scanning uh, goes. Maybe it might be the replacement.
All right, so we got the photographs imported into Lightroom. And what I did here was I left an original photograph copy and then I also uh, kind of went in earlier before I filmed this and just made the final positive image of what the scan is going to look like. But uh, rather than just show you guys the finished product, I want to show you guys how I got to that. So here are a couple of images here that I have uh, just straight from the camera. We're going to do this photograph of Jordan, which is color film, as well as some black and white. So we'll do this one of the twin suits in San Francisco. And the first step, and the first thing after importing it into Lightroom, the first thing you need to do is just crop out any excess. So I'll go into the crop feature, go ahead and straighten it out a little bit so that when you crop that it's actually accurate. Uh, and so I went in and I cropped it down and I made sure that I only included in the crop the photograph, none of the um, excess borders or anything like that because sometimes the borders will affect exposure. And so you want to just be able to, uh, especially when you're just starting, you know, with the DSLR scan here, you want to be able to make sure you're only going to be editing what's in the photograph. Okay. So here we go. Now that we have uh, the negative, essentially, we need to now turn it into a positive. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. The way that I learned from a buddy of mine was to use the point curve tool right here. Now, if you're using black and white, you're only going to be using this one right here. And you want to make sure it's the point curve. But if you're going to be doing color, which I'll show you guys in a second, you're going to use this uh, a different method, which is going to be red, green and blue. So RGB. So on the point curve here, you want to look at kind of this histogram, almost kind of this faded histogram here. And because we're using black and white, we're only going to be using this one. And you want to see where that uh, where the histogram starts on the left side here. So you want to take that, drag it there and then drag it all the way up. So your left side should be lined up right where the histogram lines up so right about there you want to do the same for the right side but all the way down to the bottom so go ahead and bring that down and then just drag it to where the histogram ends and as you guys see already that pretty much did the trick um, for the most part but when you scan it with the digital camera you're scanning the entire thing as if it were a color photograph so what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and just turn this over into Adobe Monochrome to edit as a black and white photograph and bam folks you have your positive that is the kind of finished product and after you do that you're going to adjust contrast, you know, you do what you need to do to make the photograph look like you want it to. Uh, I'm not going to show you guys that entire process here, but here is my final kind of product from what uh, the DSLR kind of scan looks like. So here it is here. I'll pop up a photograph of a scan with a conventional film scanner, the traditional Epson scanner versus this one side by side. So you guys can kind of see the differences and similarities. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, if you zoom in, man, just the quality is really good, you know, coming from the digital camera. I mean, the, the camera that I was using is a Sony a7 II and uh, 24 megapixels with that macro lens, really, really nice and sharp results. So I'm very pleased so far with how, uh, you know, the detail looks on these scans. And it might be a little bit better or even on the same playing field. I'll leave that for you guys to decide. final product and one thing that I want to touch on is that when you're scanning color film with any kind of scanner whether it be a, a traditional or DSLR or whatever it may be your colors are always going to come out a little bit flat and so you need to add some type of preset or just adjust the colors in a certain way to make it look more like the film stock now there are a couple of ways to go about this one of them would be to buy some of those presets folks like uh, I think there's like negative lav pro is one of them. There's also Silverfast. It's another great software, but I don't have all of that. And so I tried my best just to do it straight out of Lightroom without using any presets. But I'm going to pop up the original image that I scanned with the with the scanner. And then I'm going to pop up the one that I did with the, uh, the digital camera and kind of compare them. And that's after some post processing folks. So just know that once you scan it with a, you know, traditional scanner or your digital camera, you're going to have to do some type of color editing to your photographs.
right, you guys. Now, to end this video, I want to conclude my thoughts on scanning film with a DSLR sc camera. <laughs> with a digital camera and talk a little bit from both perspectives from somebody who has scanned film in the past and also from the perspective of a beginner who just doesn't know what route to take whether it be getting the traditional film scanners or just going the digital routes. Now from the perspective of somebody who scanned film in the past, scanning with a digital camera is a lot faster and I'm talking about probably an hour faster because a roll of 36 black and white through my Epson scanner it takes me around 45 minutes to an hour where I could probably knock out a roll in about five to 10 minutes. But the drawback of that folks is that you're gonna have to spend a lot more time in post process. So workflow does seem like it's a little bit more on the back end. So if you're cool with that, there's no doubt that you should try this out because it's a lot faster than the traditional scanner. Now, in terms of a beginner who just wants to see what route to take, um, the first thing that I want to say is that one, you're going to need a digital camera. So if you don't have a digital camera, just go for the traditional scanner. And the second thing, which I probably feel like is the determining factor is, do you have experience in Lightroom? If you have experience in Lightroom, I feel like going the digital camera scanning route is going to be somewhat more efficient. Let's just say it like that. And as long as you're okay in putting the time to learn the process, of uh, changing the negative into a positive and then color correcting afterwards, um, it might be well worth it. But for anybody who doesn't have any knowledge on Lightroom, or maybe you just don't have the tools to your disposal, I would say go for the traditional scanner or even just get your film scanned at a lab. It's gonna be a lot more simple. And frankly, I'll be honest with you guys, this process will be a little intimidating for somebody who's just getting into film. And so I don't wanna scare anybody off, but I will say that if you are here for the long ride, give it a shot. But if you just wanna get some good quality scans, pay the money to get a scan at a lab or just go the traditional scanner route. It's gonna be a lot more simple than the digital camera scanning setup. So all in all, my personal thoughts, I absolutely loved the entire process. And I kind of think that it balances out because with the traditional scanner, yeah, it takes more time, but a lot of what the scanner will do for you is what you're gonna be manually doing in Lightroom. So it levels the playing field out a little bit. The decision is up to you. Personally, for me, I think I'm gonna just continue doing both routes. I think I like scanning medium format more with the um, traditional scanner. All in all, I really enjoyed the first experience of scanning with a digital camera. And if you guys have any tips for me, folks, uh, I'm very much new to this. Please drop them in the description, or excuse me, in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say and if you guys can share anything with the rest of the film community. So. Uh, I really want to just say at the end of this video, thank you guys so much for tuning into this. If you made it till the very end, drop a like down below. And as always, gang, I'll see you in the next one. Minolta gang. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Stay safe out there, by the way, with the coronavirus. All right.